first thing first, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad everything turned out all right. I know it was touch and go for a little bit. But I but I'm gonna be honest. I I did feel some kind of way. I I I thought you was ghosting the brother, man. I really did. So Ali Snow, what's going on, man? How, how how you feel? Like, first thing first, how do you feel? Like, how how do you feel? Because I've been following you on your TikTok. You was able to get back into the truck. You was able to yep. uh you you was able to go out without a babysitter. So how do you feel, man? Uh, slowly getting back to myself. Uh, it's, I don't know. I'm losing all my damn hair. All this crap from COVID is biting my ass. But um, my body is just not what it is. Three weeks in a coma, you lose all your muscle tone. And then, so it's just gaining my muscles back, and being able to climb up down out the truck. So I set out like another month of physical therapy left. And then after that, I'm going to try to go back to work. So uh, at least another month. I'm going to say middle of next month. I'm going to attempt to go back to work. I got somebody in my truck right now. My boss man's driving in. We put a driver in his truck. And uh, so I don't know. I'm ready to go back to work. I can tell you that. Well, you you looking extremely well. I mean, considering where you was at to where you at right now i mean only I, I can only say god was on your side while doing this whole process so let's uh let's take it back because i i have talked to you prior yeah. to your situation and i i think at that time you you said you felt kind of sick but well i i didn't think it was that serious so Take me back, man, to what happened. I come home for Christmas. That's what happened. Stay the hell out on the road. That's the best advice I got for anybody. That's what it is. I came home for Christmas. I caught COVID. Uh, I kept. I tested negative for COVID seven times. They didn't know I had it until they did a blood test. Uh, they thought I just had pneumonia. They sent me home. I had threw a clot in my lungs, and I was coughing up blood. And... uh then one night, I was, I'm in the truck. I, I had put everything I need to in the truck. I was leaving the next morning. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm in the back of my truck. I cannot breathe. Uh, I, my heart rate was like 160. And my O2, it's supposed to be anywhere from 93 to 100. Mine was at like 72. So I couldn't breathe. I couldn't nothing. They, in, they admitted let, me two days later. Let, let me stop you right there. For anybody that's wondering what the O2 is, it's the same thing I got. It's a little old, it's a little sensor that goes on your finger and it monitors not only your breathing, but your heart rate as well. And anything, yep. and anything below a 97, I believe, Anything below a ninety-seven, you should get checked in, and did that's the same thing that uh that they gave me. All right, go go ahead. So uh, they admitted me to the hospital that night. They transferred me to a different hospital the next day. Uh, once I got to the other, I don't remember anything. Once I got transferred to the other hospital, all that based on what I got told. So. Once I got to the other hospital, they innovate, they put a tube down my throat. Uh, and then they, they induced me into a coma. Um, and then it was a couple of days later after that, they ended up just going ahead and putting a trach in, which is where they cut your throat open and put a tube down your throat instead of in your mouth. Because your mouth's got so many different bacteria, something about it can actually hurt you. So they put the tube down. But that was when I started improving. But then my heart stopped and, uh, they had to bring me back with the damn paddles. I got a scar on my chest now where they had to shock me. Uh, let's see. I ended up having a yeast infection in my lungs because I aspirated. I uh, held a whole bunch of fluid. I remember they, they started to bring me out of the coma. They had me on fentanyl and Dilaudid and a, para, a paralytic, which is what keeps my body from moving. And then they had me on a whole bunch of pain medicine. And... Um, so when I came out of it, I couldn't distinguish between fantasy and reality. Uh, a lot of the stuff was just, I'd be seeing stuff. Um, and then once I finally did wake up, I had a tube in my throat. Uh, I had a tube ran down my nose to feed me and uh, a whole bunch of 
um, I think I had like three different IVs and I couldn't move. I couldn't lift my head off the pillow. All right. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's, let's take each situation at a time here. This, this is a lot to take in. Um, Allie, uh, you know, watching TV and, you know, and not seeing, and, you know, not reality, you know, when people go into a coma, it, it, on TV, it's like, okay, they're in a coma, and then the next day, they're out of the coma. When you was in your coma, I mean, what, was your, was your mind, was your mind functioning when you was in the coma? Like, when you was in the coma, yeah. like, where, like, like, what was going on mentally when you was in your coma, if if you could remember anything? So my family was coming and visiting me. So in my coma, I was drink. It was like vivid dream. I didn't know I was out. Like everything that was going on with me was like real. But like the dreams were extreme. Like in one of the dreams, I ended up in Mexico with damn cartel dealing with drugs. It was the dumbest stuff in the world. But like, my family was somehow there. And the only reason I can think that they were getting put in the dreams was because I would hear them talk to me. Uh, then, I don't, it was just, it was a whole bunch of vivid dreams. Like, my heart stopped whenever I was in the coma, and they brought me back. Like, people were like, well, did you see a light? I didn't see nothing. Hell, I didn't know nothing was going on. Right. Um, so that was the, uh, like, you know, so when you was in your coma, you could still actually hear your people. You could still hear the... You could still hear the people, but you couldn't couldn't respond, couldn't respond yeah. and couldn't comprehend what was going on. Yeah, it was like the drugs that they had me on had me hallucinate too. So it went from I remember when I very first woke up, I was as mean as I could be to everybody because when I was a, or in that paraplegic state, I was under the assumption that my family was around. And, or I had believed that they were around and they could see that I was hurt and I couldn't get up and I couldn't move because I could tell that about myself. I, they just weren't saving me. So when I finally did come out of it, I kept telling them to, you know, go kill themselves because y'all don't let me sit here and basically waste away. But that was because that was how I, I took it. it. It wasn't until I got told that, you know, you were in a coma and there was nothing we could do about it. Did it register in my mind that they were just there visiting me, not there to watch me be hurt? I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. I was out for blood whenever I woke up. All right. So, so the part it was because I was out. So the part where you where they told you that you coded, it, and again, you know, I, you, I, I would have asked the same question because every time when somebody say they. They 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 pass, but then they brought back. They 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 see the other side. They can see their body. They can see this. They can see that. But for you, actually, me actually it's knowing different. somebody that been through it, how I mean, you you didn't you you didn't experience any of that stuff. You, it was just a whole bunch of crazy dreams, and. uh Whenever they started bringing me off of medicine, I couldn't distinguish between fantasy and reality there for a few days. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember um, just imagining stuff. And my mom was like, you're, you're pulling it out of your ass, Alicia. This is, that did not happen. But I didn't know it didn't happen because in my mind it did. So they, when at that point, they, they had literally told my family I was going to die. At one point in time, they literally just were feeding me medicine to keep me comfortable until my body passed away because they had give up on me at one point. And um, I guess I'm hard-headed. I don't know. I don't know what saved me. The grace of God is the only thing I can think of because Miracle they, of God, had man. they had counted me out. But then coming out of it, and I, I think that's the hardest thing I'm having – to deal with now is my body getting back right because I present as normal when you look at me you hear me talk all that is the same old Alicia that y'all had a few months ago but walking and getting up and down out of stuff uh I, I ended up having a stroke when I was in the coma um so my left side of my body is way weaker than it was and I have something called drop foot on my left side 
which is basically when you walk, you go heel to toe. I can't pick my toes up, so I want to kick the ground. It's getting better, but they got to put me in a brace so I don't kick the ground and fuss my face walking through the parking lot, I guess. But it's just dealing with all the stupid stuff, that and the scars. Like, got this big old scar on my throat. And then they had sewed stuff into the side of my neck. It was called a pick line. And uh, you can see where they had sewed down crap into my neck. It's, I don't know. I still can't come to terms with the fact that my I actually died. That's just weird to me, like, to even think about it. I like, mean, uh, you know, just just watching you- just just watching the journey from your family's point of view all the way up until now is it's a it's a it's a freaking miracle, man, that that you was able to able to pull through, you know. So all it is, so all it is that puts you in it, could that attest to COVID no pneumonia? Possible, possible. Yep. Yep, that's what it was. It started with COVID, then the COVID set off the double pneumonia, and then the double pneumonia set off respiratory failure. That was what it, my whole respiratory system decided to fail. That's what happened. Because I was, I would have died in my truck. Like, I was bound and determined I was leaving. So, and I was already in my truck that night. If I wouldn't have had somebody come pick me up and take me to the hospital, I would have left the next day, and then heaven forbid that would have happened in a whole other state where nobody could have got to me. Or what if I'd have parked somewhere and I just weren't smart enough to know where I was? I'd call 911, but where are you? Some damn where. Come find me. Like, it, I don't know. By the grace of God that I was still home. So, man, it would have been a mess. Listen, I mean, I mean, what what you went through was a was was a wild experience. I mean, I listen. I I everybody keep telling me that the shot that I that I took the 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 Pfizer shot that I took. I, everybody keep telling me that that wasn't that that wasn't it that triggered my COVID. And I'm 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 sticking to my guns. I'm I'm really because I I wasn't sick. I didn't. I didn't feel. I, I I wasn't feeling bad before I got the shot on that Saturday. That Monday I started feeling weird. That Tuesday it was coming on heavy. Wednesday I started. You know, I it, it was like you know I I went to try to take some over the counter medicines. Thursday I was like, you know, it it was just getting worse. And then when I got home Friday. I, I told my son to shoot me straight to the hospital. Like, you know, I was I was coughing, I was wheezing, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk. And then when I got to the hospital, the hospital told me like, oh, okay, well, it ain't a big deal, you know, just, you know, just go home and yada, yada, yada. They test me out and they said that I had COVID and then they said I had pneumonia. You know, it was uh, COVID, you know, it was COVID, pneumonia caused by COVID. And then they kept me in the hospital. Like, I mean, I mean, I, I, you know, I didn't go through the extreme of of what they did to you. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know, was in the hospital. They gave me a whole bunch of medicines. Uh, You know, I mean, at night it's freaking crazy. Like you can't get no kind of sleep, man. Like, lady, they're coming out that damn fifteen minutes. Oh my god, they came. They they came in, poked my finger, poked my stomach, poked my forehead, and all like that, did man. They but you on, did they put you on insulin when you were in the hospital? Yes, I. Well, I. Yeah, I, see, yeah. It's, it's the drugs that they had us on because I'd lost it on the doctor whenever they were checking me out mm-hmm. because they were gonna actually keep me on insulin coming home and i know like insulin is one of the things you can't be on from my understanding and drive a truck right and like y'all are playing with my career i'm not but they, but but you know what though it is it's changed i gotta look it up uh i heard you know i i gotta look it up and i gotta i gotta follow through with it but i i know that it's probably not it's, as long as you're like closely regulated with your doctor and stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's 
I, I just would rather not deal with it. Right. I think it's I think it's changed now that you can take your that you can do the shot or the the insulin shot and all like that. Uh, back then you had to get a um, a, what do you call it? Uh, what you had to get? Oh, an excuse, I think, an exemption or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. And you had to wait like a couple of you know wait like a couple of weeks or months and all like that. But I think now. I think now, I think the FMCSA lifted all of that, so you're able to, you know, do your insulin shots and all like that. But, but yeah, when I, yeah, when I was in a, when I was in there, you know, they because my uh my glucose, my glucose was way out of whack when when they when yeah, I was mine in the wasn't, hospital. Mine was do it first. But then once I got to talking to the doctor about it, and that way it's the medicine that they give us that throws our uh, bodies out of whack and makes our glucose glucose go up. Uh, and then, you know, sugar actually helps bacteria breed in the body. So you're already sick. So what they're trying to do is keep the sugar levels at uh, like a regulated level. So that way you don't peak and it doesn't cause you to end up with any more infections or anything like that. I mean, there's reasons behind it. It just it made me panic at first because I was like, "I we just lost my career and this in one fell swoop. Gosh, I can't even walk now. If I do start walking again, how are we going to do that? You know, hell, I had to go to when you got out of the hospital. Did you get to go straight home? I had like yeah. a month of rehab. Yeah, I, I, you know, for for me, I I went home. They gave me uh they gave me a uh the oxygen. They gave me the oxygen machine to take home and I was on oxygen for, you know, for the duration before I actually uh, got back in the truck. But, yeah, it wasn't it, it, it wasn't it wasn't fun. I can tell you that much. It was not fun. And seeing you in, in seeing you in that condition, I can tell definitely wasn't fun. Listen, Allie, let me let me let me let me let me, let me throw this at you right quick. Now, you was in the hospital. Uh, for for a good amount of time, um, and your fa and your family did you know try? I I believe they started a GoFundMe, and I think they uh also put out your uh your your uh cash app and everything. Let me ask you a question, mm -hmm. man. You know, a young man just passed uh uh a, a, a week ago. And he would, and he didn't qualify for insurance. How's your how's your insurance? I mean, did you have any oh, when you was in there or what? I didn't have any. I didn't have any. This is this is the second time in like three years I've got me sick and didn't have any insurance. But um, COVID is if you got sick with COVID, COVID has a federal policy grant that they had wrote in the law whenever all this bull crap started that if you didn't have insurance, they will pay for it. They're, right, you just got to go right. look. Um, that, that's what it is for me. At this point, I, all I'm having to do, I had to have, uh, I had to prove that basically I didn't work since I got COVID and um, that we don't know when I'm going back to work. Because at, at first they were telling me I was going to be out of work for a year, which meant I was going to have to go on disability. Um, not doing that. So uh, they had cut it down to six months because I started walking so fast. Now they're telling me it's going to be within a month. Um, so it, it depends on the person, I guess, and what all you want to go out for. But there are federal grants to do that. And then you always have, like, the option for short-term disability if you aren't going to be able to get back in the truck very fast. Now, thankful to between what money I have put back and what everybody sent on, you know, through the GoFundMe and stuff, I'll be fine till I go back to work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to go out here and blow money, but my bills are going to be paid. And that's all the hell that I'm worried about. Um, as long as that's taken care of, I'm good. So as far as the rest of it's concerned, it's, there's programs to pay for it. And, and even if somebody passes away, there's programs that they're, all they're going to do is cremate the body. That's all the government's going to pay for. They're not going to pay for a plot. But I mean, it's something, something better than nothing. You so how so le now let me ask you this now uh now that you back you you back you 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 not one hundred you 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 are about ninety five how how important it is now for you to get insurance? Oh, that's something that everybody needs, and and at this point I feel like maybe it's 
the generation I live in. Or you always have that that thought in your head that that'll never happen to me. And it's a, it's a lie. Because I remember being on TikTok and watching people when COVID first started coming out, everybody getting sick. And I'm like, man, I wasn't even worried about the vaccine. And I was one that didn't wear a mask. And I had hit every bad spot we had since Corona started. Never caught the crap. And then all of a sudden it leveled me. So you don't know when that stuff was coming. I was coming home for Christmas. Everything was good. I was about to go back out on the road and go to work. So insurance is big. But that's where, like, being an owner op or working for a, a 1099 company, any of that stuff, insurance is so much more expensive for us guys. So that's why I just, I'll be all right. The kids have got insurance. That's all I was ever worried about. As long as the kids is good, I'll be all right. Well, I ain't going to be able to raise the damn kids if I don't get some damn insurance. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's, that is what's up. Well, Allie, hey, babe, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for hopping back on with me, man. I really do appreciate it because I, I straight up thought you ghosted a brother like, yo, I ain't fucking with that nigga no more. I'm like, oh, I get in my feelings. And then when I get determined to do something, it's one of those things where you just kind of got to put your head down and walk forward. Can't let nobody distract me and I'll get distracted. And I know how I am. So that's what's there up. At first, all I was worried about was working out and sleeping. Is, is it, when you, when, when you, uh, first went down uh i'm i'm not sure and i'm hoping i'm not being nosy or anything but is you and uh you and old guy still together and if so what 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 did he what was he like when you you went down oh that's us okay so long story short me he had um his truck messed up in december so i went picked him up brought him home I live in North Carolina, right above Charlotte. Uh, he's from Detroit. So I brought him to my house for Christmas. Um, I I was six. So I wasn't leaving back out, so I got him a ticket to go home. So he went home, got his truck, he went back to work. But we had split up before he left. We got a big argument before he left. We had split up. Um, but I was six. And then it was one of those things where it was like, we're still friends now. I, I still call him check on him. Still call him check on me, but Nobody had knew we split up before I got sick. And even when I got sick, he was he was always there. Uh, he tried to come see me whenever I was in the coma, uh, but they wouldn't let him in the hospital because he wasn't uh, family. Family. Um, not up in the ICU. So uh, he, he was there. He's been there. He, he has been very good. Even after the, he made sure that I knew I wasn't alone. Um, it, it's weird, though. Because, like, in my mind, when I got in an argument and we split up, next thing you know, I go to sleep. I wake up months later, and you done moved your life. I mean, he was, he was there for me. He checked on me. But, like, his, you know, there's always that time after a breakup that you need to have that heartbreak and to move on. He had already had time to become okay with the situation. Not only was I all of a sudden I was uh oh, I think I'm I think I'm losing right. you. Hold on right quick. Let me there you go. Okay, I got you. All right, go ahead. What you were saying now? It just it was weird waking up and having to go through that, realizing that we weren't together no more. He's not a bad guy. He wasn't. It was just and we've been friends for the longest time before we got together. It was just, he he got in his feelings and I got in mine and it went left. He's a good person. He's got to be there. I got you. All right. Well, you're back now. You're you're getting stronger, and uh, you know, more power to you. And and much and get well the rest of the way, man. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's get back together. Probably when you get back in the truck. Let's let's uh, let's hope for you to get back in the truck, man. But as of right now, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Cause like I said, I I was in my feelings a little bit, but I understood I under I understood the assignment. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gotta give me time. I'll get there eventually. Thank you, Ali, man. And 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 it's good to have you back, man. It's it's real good to have well, you back. You. I appreciate it. No doubt, no doubt. 
All right, you take care. You get yourself some rest and everything and uh, work on that hair. <laughs> All right, baby. All right, now. <laughs>